What's up everybody? Welcome back. Please leave a like so this video is recommended to others. And hit that subscribe button so you can keep seeing videos just like this. This is why you shouldn't mess with Ouija boards. A man by the name Nick explains that after attempting to contact whatever might have been causing all the strange activity in his new home, he fears something attached itself to him. I should never f*** that Ouija board. Something began opening doors in his new home. Oh. And aggressively knocking over objects. I came home from work and this was on the floor in the living room. When I picked it up, it automatically wanted to open to this page. Um, like as if somebody looked at this page a lot or something. And I noticed these three burn lines in it. But look what's in the middle. But it wasn't until one day a snake notices a mysterious video in his gallery. I didn't so read it. any of his recollection that things would take a darker turn. In the video, Nick can be seen standing in the dark as he's being filmed. I don't have any answers or explanations for what I'm seeing with my own eyes. It's me. But I don't remember any of that. I think that ghost was hungry, man. He was looking through his fridge, through his pantry, think through his drawers, how he didn't find nothing good. This morning, chilling video of an Oregon man narrowly dodging a runaway four foot saw blade just moments after he went into a convenience store. I mean, obviously it wasn't my time, but <laughs> yeah, it's probably the closest I've ever experienced it. Surveillance video shared with our affiliates showing the, the laugh, saw blade dude. barreling with high speed towards this Oregon store. Oh, this then poor guy. Just inches away from the door that Shane Rimke opened just seconds earlier. The saw blade nearly slicing through the wall. These photos showing the damage. I was walking into the store here. I put my handle on the door and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner. Just as a cloud of smoke pops up and I see a guy fall into the ditch and a four foot blade hurling at me. <laughs> the impact to the front of the store so strong, the owner says the entire building shook. All I heard what? was like a metal rolling down from the street and I looked at the camera, it was just wind. And all of a sudden we heard a loud bang, like it shook the, literally the whole store. A contractor on the scene who witnessed the incident telling our affiliate that the blade may have gotten loose from a lost bolt in addition to potential operator error. But Rimke says he's grateful to be alive following the close call. Then think will it be here really? Absolutely. Right. I mean I was thinking maybe it's my time, but I don't think I would have survived getting touched by that thing. No. Holy crap, dude. Damn, imagine minding your own business and then you get split in half. I know it's getting old, but damn final destination vibes right there. <laughs> yeah, this is trespassing. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's not like a challenge. The gate's not there to be like, oh, try and get over it. See if you can do it. It's actually there to keep you from getting in. Oh, man. Nothing like getting roasted in the middle of committing a crime. <laughs> That's a good crime deterrent. People are probably more afraid of being embarrassed than actually going to jail. Earthquake footage while being stuck on a bridge. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, no thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, this one's just a nightmare, especially after seeing that cargo ship hit that bridge here. Here's three things presidents aren't allowed to do after they leave office. The first one is they're not allowed to drive on public roads. They can do private roads, but ever since Kennedy, nobody's been allowed to drive on any public roads. Instead, they get driven around by the Secret Service, and some people like it, some people don't. But there's been a lot of presidents that have complained about this after leaving office, but 
it's for their own security. The next thing is they're not allowed to receive mail that's secret mail or private mail because the Secret Service go through every single bit of mail they have at a separate location. Basically just to protect them once again because people do send, even former presidents, bad stuff in the mail that could have ended badly. So basically no Amazon. The last thing is <laughs> that they're not supposed to have any technology that hasn't been pre-vetted by the Secret Service because it's so easy to hack into this stuff. And apparently there has been presidents who've had problems in the past by using just off-the-shelf technology, and then they end up getting hacked. Which one do you think would be the hardest for you to deal with? I think it would probably be the technology thing for me, because honestly, if someone else wanted to drive me everywhere, I don't think I would care that much. All those are kind of a deal breaker for me. I kind of like driving. I don't want nobody going through my mail, and I don't want nobody going through my phone either. But also, JFK wasn't even driving. We all know he was sitting in the back seat when well, you know, when that happened, elephant breaks into a warehouse and steals food. That sounds kind of cool. door crumpled like it was made of paper. I don't know why they're so angry. He only took one bag. You know that's not enough food. He was being nice. That poor guy wasn't even greedy. Have y'all seen this video of this guy right here yet? People say she killed him. Who has the best girlfriend ever? I do. Who just bought you all this stuff? She did. And all the stuff? My girl. Uh, all of it and I'm about to eat this and then we're gonna chow on that after so mm. happy Easter yeah <laughs> but we're not eating at all just know that because we gotta save some yeah you know budget cuts you know <laughs> happy save 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 you know so we're gonna scoff this stuff down Cause, Cause Boo deserved it, <laughs> you know. Even though we get in our arguments sometimes, I still love you. Okay. I love you too. Yeah. I love you too, baby. Y yeah, you you better. <laughs> so I just spent some money on you. Yeah. <laughs> what? Dude, I can't tell if this is satire or not. That guy actually kind of looks scared. Oh no. Somebody should check on that guy. That might be real. This morning, driver beware. Your car could be recording how you drive, your speed, or any hard braking, and then transmitting that data to an information clearinghouse. The New York Times reports that data clearinghouse, LexisNexis, is working with insurance companies and their collaboration could drive your insurance rates higher. In that broad sense, we're all connected and devices are connected. It would not be surprising to see that others also might be having some some plans. The data collection was uncovered by drivers using General Motors OnStar service, which is traditionally used to make an emergency call. The owner of a Chevy Bolt told the Times he uncovered a 258-page report on his personal driving habits after he asked about a more oh, than 20% no. increase in his insurance rate. His insurance company told him to check his LexisNexis file, and turns out GM's OnStar service has a smart driver feature, which tracks driver habits as a way to improve safety. GM confirmed to the Times that it shares select insights with LexisNexis and another data broker, but says the program is optional to customers and that drivers can unenroll at any time. This is the beginning of, a, of an era where we will continue to be connected in every possible way. Cars might seem like the last bastion of this 
in a cocoon-like environment. But it's one more thing that's getting connected. Nationwide, auto insurance rates are up 26% this year, rising six yep. times faster than overall inflation. The increase is blamed on several factors, including the rising cost of car repairs. But now you can add another factor, the possibility of your insurance companies tracking how you drive. How is this legal? How? There's literally no privacy anywhere. I always assumed that when I would rent a car from a rental company, it was spying on me, obviously. But now your own car. That is so ridiculous. I hate this. I hate this so much. Does your dog bite? Is that a dog? Oh, that poor guy. He's just old and fat, but he's still beautiful. For a second, I didn't know if I was looking at a bear or a guy in a costume. <laughs> poor guy. He needs a little bit of exercise. Two of the worst fears that you could possibly think of put into one. It's okay. I'm just, I don't want to get completely inundated with, with spiders, of course. Oh, no. I mean, no. it's the inevitable conclusion of what I am doing, but, ugh. They're all over. <laughs> oh, uh, they're raining no. Down, you know. Can you see him? Oh, oh. you can see that, but they are kind of everywhere. Oh. I think I'm going to get out of this pit. See him coming up from the wall? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see what I can do. Oh, my God. <laughs> You should have hit the barrel roll, man. Just start annihilating generations of them. I think that legit would have gave me a panic attack. Especially after that first spider would have crawled in my mouth. Hillary Clinton National Airport Executive Brian Malinowski is currently on life support after a wild sh** out with ATF at 6 o'clock this morning. Where one ATF agent had non-life-threatening shot wounds but the brother of Malinowski is stating that his brother is currently on life support and the doctors are not going to do any surgery on him because they anticipate that he's not going to make it mm. ATF had showed up at his house this morning to serve a search warrant that's the first red flag his brother is asking why they didn't just serve him the search warrant at work the second thing is that they are reporting that the ATF just kicked in the door and stormed the house as if it were swatted which then his brother responded which resulted in the Fight. Brother had stated that he was an avid collector of arms and other weapons, as well as coins, and lived in an upper middle class suburb and earned about two hundred and fifty three thousand a year. Because of that and his pretty ho hum lifestyle, he could not fathom his brother being in in anything illegal. He had far too much to lose. A public record search of Brian Malinowski showed no arrests other than run-ins with or other run-ins with police. They saw firefighters carrying circular saws, crowbars, and other tools into the house. After the incident, a week before all of this had happened, apparently Malinowski had met with senators out in Arkansas to talk about the dealings of the airport. And police are currently still investigating the case and kind of what happened, but his brother is like, something isn't right. Malinowski is responsible for the administration, operations, maintenance, and development of the airport, which belongs and is named after Bill and Hillary Clinton. And many people are asking, and I have to too, I wonder what his ties were with Boeing more to come hold on one second i would like to fact check this because this sounds crazy he is no longer of this earth and everything that she said happened did happen wow that is freaking scary i'm telling you man it's like we live in a movie but you can't say that because you're crazy you're crazy if you say that Ay, Dios mío, pero por algo pasan las cosas. Se me averió el camión y no hay nada por aquí Lo único sería ir y pedir ayuda ahí. ¿Creen que debería de ir a pedir ayuda ahí? Dude broke down right in front of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. That's funny. That's actually not the real house. That's just where they recorded the movie, but still. In 1982, in Los Angeles, there was the craziest discovery. And I never heard about this until a couple days ago, bro. There was this guy named Melvin Weisberg, and he was a pathologist. And that's basically like, they do like all the lab tests on um, your body and like your skin. Oh, okay. And so he was one of those guys and i guess he ran a bunch of laboratories throughout santa monica hmm. so this dude was like a pretty important guy right around that time he was paying for this shipping container that he had in his backyard and it's like this huge backyard and it's like this 
huge ass shipping container right like he was paying money every month to keep it in his backyard and he ended up missing a payment they ended up confiscating the crate and they took it back right and when they took it back they took it to this like junkyard or this area where they had like a bunch of the other crates Mm -hmm. they get it they take it to this area bro and dude you're not gonna believe what they found inside of this crate they crack open the crate instantly majority of the workers start throwing up it smelled all about in there they looked and there was over seventeen thousand. What? Inside of this container. And they found this inside of LA. Yeah. 17,000? 17,000 quarts of babies, bro. What? Dude, I'm telling you. And the way these babies look like they got did is disgusting, bro. It's like some of them are like kind of sweet half. Some of them, like, you can see like they're popping out of their head. What the hell? All this crazy. Bro, I literally could show you the footage right now if you want to see it, but I can't show you. And the craziest part is it's even still on YouTube. Really? Serious, yeah, yeah, I was looking at it this morning. Um, why is this footage supposedly on YouTube? Some of the details are a little off, but yeah, don't bother looking it up. You're better not seeing what I just saw. Oh my god. What were you thinking? <laughs> hey, maybe you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> Dude, how did you do that? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe you should go back home. Maybe you shouldn't be driving. I think the worst I've done is close the door on my hand. That's pretty much it. This is a whole nother level of non-self-awareness. Dude, it's so scary to think that that's the last line of defense after your brakes fail. And the worst part about that is, is like he started rolling backwards. How's he supposed to stop at that point? I don't know if you guys agree with me, but there's something really strange happening in Lana Del Rey's concert. This is the second time something like this happens. Check this out. This was recorded by Epic Paranormal. Check this out, guys. This was the strangest concert I've ever been to. There was a guy screaming constantly for Lana to kill him. And he kept requesting heart shaped box. The whole vibe was incredibly weird, spooky. Creepy, right? A lot of people feeling these creepy vibes in concerts lately, but here's where things get even stranger. Check this out. But as the night went on, especially the last like three songs, her demeanor changed. Lana Del Rey's demeanor changed. Hmm. And for some reason, my camera kept glitching. On all the photos I was taking, I don't know why this was happening. energy there there was a there was a weird spooky energy at that concert i think that's just mental illness man <laughs> these concerts probably help induce it more the way they're making it seem like they're satanic rituals probably make a couple of those people out there go crazy the police and the government are actually watching you a lot more than you know there's a video of a guy who actually filmed his interaction with police officers that came to his house what was his offense that made them come there well he was on a tour of dc and they had the pylons in front of the uh, buildings And he went up to him and he had heard that the pylons were actually timber that was coated in concrete or something. So he goes up there and he taps it. Well, the security camera uh, caught him tapping the pillar pylon. So when the police officer shows up, he goes, were you checking those pillars for density in case of fire? And the guy is like, I was a tourist. Note to self, never go to DC. Dang, man, talk about being paranoid. They're gonna find all my terrible memes that I've saved, and I'm probably gonna go to jail. Hey, ba- bag up, bag up, bag up, bag up. James! Back, back up. I know he, damn. Back, James! Tilt it, James! James, James! James, he's about to hit that, James! Oh my God, James! Come on, boy! What is oh you waiting on? Run faster than that! Damn! 
Come on, Jack, get in the truck. Come on. Damn, James, you don't listen. What is wrong with you? Are they not checking who they're hiring to drive these things? We got planes that are falling apart and captains that can't captain. This reminds me of the Jackass movie. They had four seats on that one though. Americans do stuff like this as if they have free healthcare. It do be like that though sometimes. <laughs> Oof. Oh my god. Holy oh no. Um, I am behind a trailer, a uh, car carrier, and oh my god. I've got that on camera. Probably not a really good idea to follow so close. I know you're trying to get the footage, man, but I swear I think I saw something fly off that thing and hit his car. Holy sh Yeah, something flew here. Everybody's a bad driver in this clip. Get a load of this. Just I, to go. After all these years, I've never met the Olsen Comedy. twins. He introduced me to them. I said to him, how do I tell them apart? He says, Ashley swallows. How is this funny? Mary Kate acting lessons. He tell her, act like this never happened. Bob Saget, who and the girl in the kind of joke is that? And it's crazy, because it seems to be the theme with all these young stars. I may end up running off with you myself, you know. That's what Steven says. Steven, it's Steven Spielberg? Yeah. Hi, Steven, I love you. Second best again. Story of my life with women, yeah. She even talks about being at those Hollywood parties. Well, I've grown up very fast, and it's not very normal to see in the a big Hollywood party drinking. You heard that right. At old, she was at Hollywood parties getting drunk. And it's crazy how it's such a common theme for these childhood stars to get institutionalized for acting out. Well, I don't know anything about Bob Saget, but those were some wild things they were saying. It's just this reoccurring theme, man. Especially with Diddy's mansion getting raided and now he's, you know, being accused of all those horrible things. It's a pattern. You just see it repeat itself over and over and over with child stars. This is the moment a serial boarded a plane after being released from prison. The other passengers do not seem happy. Charles Sobraj is a serial fraudster and thief who preyed on Western tourists traveling on the hippie trail of South Asia during the 1970s. He was known as the Bikini King because of the attire of several of his victims, as well as the Splitting King and the Serpent for his snake-like ability to avoid detection by authorities. Sobraj is believed to have murdered at least 20 tourists in South and Southeast Asia, with 14 of the victims in Thailand alone. He served a prison sentence in India from 1976 to 1997 before returning to France upon release. In 2003, Sopraj traveled to Nepal, where he was arrested, tried, and ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment. On December 21, 2022, the Supreme Court of Nepal ordered his release from prison due to his advanced age, after he had served 19 years of his sentence. Do you think he should have been released? Look at the lady sitting next to him. <laughs> I'd be acting like the ultimate Karen man. You need to change my seat right now. Ah, yeah, makes perfect sense. Let's release this terrible person back into the world. In honor of April Fool's Day, these are some of the greatest hoaxes ever pulled off. In 1948, a man named Tony Signoroni stomped around a beach in Florida wearing a pair of 30 pound lead shoes. For the next 40 years, he had locals convinced that a 15-foot tall penguin was waddling around the area. In 1979, billionaire Richard Branson released a hot air balloon shaped like a UFO over the streets of London. The next morning, local police forces were mobilized and even the army was alerted. 
When the balloon landed, Branson had also paid a little person to walk out dressed as E.T. In 1957, the BBC did a segment on a Swiss family harvesting spaghetti from their spaghetti tree. Since spaghetti was fairly unknown in the UK at the time, hundreds of people contacted the BBC for advice on growing their own spaghetti trees. It's regarded as one of the greatest hoaxes ever from a reputable news network. On April 1st, 1975, residents of Sitka, Alaska woke up to the nearby dormant volcano blowing out black smoke. When a Coast Guard pilot went to investigate, he found 70 burning tires and the words April Fool spray painted into the snow. Oh, In honor of April Fool. Damn, man, that last one was foul. All of these are hilarious. I think my favorite one was the, the giant penguin. I could just imagine people really thought there was a giant penguin waddling around. These were good, except for the volcano one. That's a little too wild. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with me again. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're awesome, and I appreciate you. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.